Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the count all possible routes problem. We are given an array of integers with distinct positive values, each of which represents a city. The absolute value of the difference between two numbers in the array represents the fuel cost for you to drive from that city to the other. You are also given three variables, start, which is the index of the city you are starting at, destination, which is the index of the city you are trying to arrive at, and fuel, which is the amount of fuel you have. Your goal is to find the amount of ways you can reach your destination without running out of fuel. You can travel in loops, however, each drive must be to a different city. This just means, say for example, we could start at city zero and go to city one for three units of fuel, then we are allowed to go back to city zero for three units of fuel, and then finally to your destination city 2 for 4 units of fuel. We would use exactly 10 units of fuel, which is our capacity, so that would be a valid path. However, we would not be allowed to travel from city 0 to city 0 over and over again because then obviously we would have an infinite number of answers. So here, the path I just mentioned is a valid path, and there are also two more paths that use 10 or less units of fuel, so the final answer that we would want to return for this example is 3. Okay, now that you hopefully understand the problem, let's try and come up with a solution. I think one of the keywords is that all possible ways part of this problem. Because whenever we are thinking of all possible ways or combinations or permutations, usually there is going to be a recursive solution. Our recursive solution is going to explore all the cities and keep track of the current fuel for the recursive call. Every recursive call will total up the roots of their recursive calls and the base case will be if a recursive call runs out of fuel. In that base case, it will stop and return zero. Otherwise, it will make more recursive calls for all the other positions and return the total of all those recursive calls. If the recursive call city happens to be the destination, we'll add one to the root count as well. Let me trace through an example to hopefully make things more clear. So let's go back to this example from earlier with four cities with the city at index zero as our starting point and the city at index two as our destination point. We have a capacity of 10 units of fuel. We can consider our first recursive call, passing in the starting point as the current city, the starting fuel as the current fuel, and the destination as the destination. This recursive call is going to make three more recursive calls, one for each city that isn't the current city. So those cities are indexed one, two, and three. For each of these recursive calls, their current city is the new city from the previous recursive call. Their current fuels are the current fuel of the previous call minus the cost it takes to travel from the previous recursive call city to the next city. If we look at the first recursive call, we see that we are traveling from city zero to city one. This is going to cost us an absolute value of five minus eight, which is three. So we subtract three units of fuel from the current 10 to get seven. For the second recursive call, similar thing, it costs us 5 minus 1 units of fuel, which is 4, so 10 units of fuel minus the cost of 4 leaves us with 6 left. And for the last recursive call, we lose 9 units of fuel, leaving us with only 1 unit left. The other thing to point out is that for our second recursive call, the current city is at our destination. So we need to add 1 to a root count, which I'll symbolize by a green plus 1. Now we go back to our first recursive call, and this call is going to make three more recursive calls, one for each city that is in itself. Those are cities 0, 2, and 3. Once again, notice how the fuel is updated according to the absolute value of the difference between the two cities. So going from city 1 to city 0 costs us 3 units of fuel, going from 1 to 2 costs us 7 units of fuel, and for this recursive call, we are once again going to add one to our account because we are at our destination. And for the third call, going from city one to city three costs us six units of fuel. Now, if we go to the first recursive call once again, this one makes three more calls to cities one, two, and three. The current fuel values for each of these recursive calls should make sense to you. The two things to point out are we are once again at our destination for the second recursive call, so I'm going to throw in another green plus one. And the other thing is that the third branch now has a negative fuel value. So this is our base case that we can't travel anymore, 
So the third branch would not make any more recursive calls and instead just return zero. Now you can hopefully kind of begin to see how our algorithm is going to identify all the unique paths. I'm not going to trace through this whole thing, but ultimately what happens is these plus ones are going to get propagated back up the call stack to give us our final answer of three. Let's jump into this solution's code. The code follows the ideas I was just discussing. We start off at the entry point of our solution, which is the function solution one. All the main function does is call the recursive helper function and ultimately it will return its value. It passes in the starting city as the current city. It passes in the destination as the destination. It passes in the starting fuel as the current fuel and the same cities list. In our helper function, we start off with our base case. As we discussed earlier, if the fuel ever drops to a negative value, we just return zero and don't make any further recursive calls. If the base case is not true, it means we have zero or more fuel, then we can continue on with our recursive calls. Our first step is to initialize the root count for this recursive call. This ultimately will be the answer we return. If the current city is equal to the destination, we are going to add one to the root count. This symbolizes the fact that we have found a new root. We don't return here because we could still have more fuel, so there could still be more paths that lead to an answer. The next part is the part where we explore all the other cities searching for more paths. If the next city is not the current city, and this should be true for all but one iteration, then we compute the cost of traveling to that next city. This part comes from the problem statement. The cost of traveling from city A to city B is the absolute value of the array values of city A and B. Now we make a recursive call to our helper function we pass in the next city as the current city. The destination remains the same. We take our current fuel, subtract off the cost it takes to travel to the next city, and this is our new fuel cost for the next recursive call. And finally, we pass the same city's array. The result of this recursive call, along with all the others in the for loop, gets summed up in our root count, which we ultimately return. So that's it for a recursive solution. Let's look at the time and space complexity of this solution. The time complexity is going to be exponential and recursive time complexity is always a bit tricky, but as a rough guide in this case, the base is going to be the number of branches that each recursive call creates and the exponent is how deep the recursive tree can grow. We can let n be the number of cities and f be the units of starting fuel we have. The number of branches each recursive call can spawn is all the cities except the current city, so that is n minus 1, and the depth is worst case each recursive call only costs one unit of fuel, so it could get to fuel units deep. For space, this is going to be how deep the recursive stack can go, and as we just said, that is fuel. Hopefully you understand the solution at this point. Let's try and improve it given the time complexity is exponential. We are going to do this by using the memoization technique where we cache the recurring subproblems so we don't waste time recomputing them. Let's go back to our code from our first solution and see where the recurring subproblems might occur. One way to identify this is to look in the parameters of the recursive calls themselves. So destination and cities, they stay the same but the current city and the current fuel for each recursive call are what can change from one call to another. And there can be multiple recursive calls with the same city and same current fuel. For example, let's look at this. There are four cities. The starting city is index one and the destination is index three. It should make sense to you that this would be our very first recursive call. Then these three calls would spawn off that first call the first two ones are the ones we want to pay attention to. Off those two calls, there's going to be these six calls. And now you can see that the two of these six calls I've highlighted in blue have the exact same current city and current fuel. So the second one is going to essentially just be a waste of time because we've already computed the answer in a previous recursive stack. We can avoid this by using a 2D cache to store the information of the repeated sub calls. So this is going to be the full code, which is very similar to our first solution, but let me walk through the step-by-step -step differences. The first thing is the initialization of our cache prior to making the initial recursive call. 
I've called this cache memo. The cache is going to have one row for each city and fuel plus one columns for each possible fuel value. The reason for the plus one is that we need a spot for a fuel value of zero. All the values in the memo start off at negative one. The negative one is just a special value to signify that this spot in the memo has not been computed and needs to be filled out. We pass this memo to our helper function, which also accepts it as a parameter. In our helper function, we now add a check to see if the spot has already been computed for this current city and current fuel value. If it has already been computed, then we can just return that computed value, saving us time. If this city and fuel has not been computed yet, then we do the same thing as the last solution, except in the recursive call, we pass along the memo as well. And finally, the last difference is once we do compute a value that hasn't been computed yet, we should store it so that the next time we encounter it, it will just be saved and our if statement from above can use it and return immediately. Okay, so how does this change affect our time and space complexity? Well, now we can have as many computations as there are slots in the memo table. So that is O of N times F, but that isn't all. Since each slot in our memo table takes N time to compute, the time complexity is O of N times F times N. And that's just N squared times F. This is a bit different from maybe other memoization solutions where the time complexity is the same as the amount of slots in the memoization table. But the difference in those other solutions is each recursive computation was a constant time operation. Here, because we have our for loop, each recursive computation is an n time computation. So our time complexity is really reflective of the amount of slots in our memo times the time required to compute a slot. For space, we have the max depth of recursion, which is O of F, same as last time. But we also have our memo, which is n rows by fuel plus one columns. So that reduces to O of n times F plus one or n times F. Okay, that is it for this solution. One final note is that there is a bottom-up solution which does not use recursion. This here is the top-down solution with recursion. The bottom-up solution has a similar idea to this solution, so I'm not going to cover it in this video, but I will paste the code for that solution as well as a brief explanation on the Knapsack website. I will link to the website in the description of this video. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching and good luck on all your interviews.